Between 1919 and 1927, the average monthly rental rate for Harlem's black residents doubled from $21 to $22 a month to just over $41 a month. Ever exuding the hustling spirit, black people got creative in urban cities like Chicago and Detroit, but particularly in Harlem. They opened up their homes for friends and neighbors to mingle, de-stress, and turn up. Rent parties required little startup costs and had guaranteed returns. These soirees included live music that often included cutting contests in which two musicians would battle it out for the crowd's favor. It was very similar to modern day dance and rap battles. Food was offered for the cheap with delicacies like fried chicken, fried fish, corn, pig's feet, pork chops, and potato salad being the standard. Among the writer Langston Hughes's possessions were numerous rent party invitations. And these cards had clever rhymes on them with discreet instructions and information. Read one card from 1955 held by someone named Rose. You can wake up the devil, raise all the hell, no one will be there to go home and tell. If you brought the card to 2213 8th Avenue, apartment 5, you could get in for 35 cents. If you showed up without an invite, you were getting waxed at 50 cents. Jukes featured a bunch of dancing that was usually considered obscene and lewd, my favorite kind of dancing, involving close touching, hugging, and grinding. This includes the slow drag, which scandalized white critics when it was later introduced on stage in a 1929 Broadway production. Do you know how turnt I would personally be doing the slow drag? when Bessie Smith's Empty Bed Blues came on. Here's one of the lyrics. He's a deep sea diver with a stroke that can't go wrong. And if you need to know what deep sea diver means, be sure to check out A History of Oral Sex. Picnic 1994 was scheduled to have performances by artists like Snoop Dogg and Queen Latifah. I know my mama was mad she couldn't go because she just had me. It's no surprise that over 200,000 people showed up. Not my mama though. This generated $80 million in revenue for the city of Atlanta. Freaknik was used as political fodder in the ongoing cultural wars that were growing increasingly partisan. Rumors circulated that the event would be canceled and that the House Speaker Newt Gingrich, who had just come into power, planned to have the American Heritage Foundation record Freaknik 95 so that there was evidence that the black college student is wasting the government's money. Now, that didn't happen, but this is hilarious to me as someone who attended a PWI and has seen how white college students behave, especially at Big Ten schools where football games cause street parties and even riots. I was maced at one, actually. Anyways, in April 1995, several Atlanta area hotels refused to accept reservations from people traveling for Freaknik. Yes, there were black women who were consensually flashing body parts for cash or attention, like vintage shake dancers and modern day strippers, or the way people do at Mardi Gras and Folsom Street Fair. Like, they film literal porn at Folsom Street Fair. They found a way to make it safe there. Why couldn't we make Freaknik safer? But maybe Freaknik was meant to be left in the 90s, said Freak Like Me singer Adina Howard, Freak Nick was about freedom. It was about just doing you and not being judged at all. Freak Nick was the first time black celebrations of joy and hedonism were thrust into a national spotlight in defiance of respectability politics and expectations of religious morality. But it was just a continuation of other partying. As pointed out by historian Stephanie M. H. Camp, deep in the woods, away from slaveholding eyes, they held secret parties where they amused themselves dancing, performing music, drinking alcohol, and courting. She detailed how women at outlaw slave parties made special outfits, did up their appearances, and celebrated with their male counterparts in a secular space of music and resistance, at great risk of whippings or worse punishments from roaming slave patrols. When chided by other enslaved people who were more religious and disapproved, it did no good. Said one Jefferson Henry, they would go off to dances and stay out all night. You couldn't talk to folks that tried to get by with things like that. They weren't going to do no different know-how. These clandestine antebellum parties weren't attended by everybody but they add another shade of variation to the black experience and prove that nothing is new. And this is what modern black youth and 20-somethings point to when they're judged for letting loose on camera in the modern social media era. 